record. Okay, I'm recording now. Now uh, all my shenanigans with the wolf are gone. So uh, new quiz is up. Um, new tutorial is up. This time it's uh, water and sound. Um, oh, Owen. Okay, Owen. Uh, send me privately an email. Uh, oh, uh, humble. Oh no, hub. Hum. H U M B. Humble bundle. Let's find you a game. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see purchases. Um. How about something from this month? No, that's July 2020. Make my choices. I have choices remaining. I have seven choices remaining. Um, okay. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, Owen, did you send me, let's go to here. Okay, Owen, I got your email, copy, um, gift to friend, uh, send an email, control V, uh, send email. You are now the proud owner of a game called Yuppie Psycho. Uh, described as indie adventure Baroque decay. So, welcome to Yuppie Psycho. I played that. <laughs> it's basically a horror game where you're in an office building the entire time, like a survival horror. Okay, works for me. Um, so, uh, new tutorial is up. Um, and uh, I've gotten through about half of uh, this week's tutorial grading. Um, I just, so common themes, um, this tutorial grading. Um, everybody felt all superior to architects everywhere after reading McMansion Hell. And as we were walking around campus, um, everybody, I, I, snark leads to snark. And, and I love McMansion Hell because it illustrates exactly the, um, the same kind of principles of architecture that like uh, architecture is elementary um, and our textbook uh, uh, espouse, but it does it in an accessible and snarky manner that makes you want to read it and it makes you laugh. At the same time, um, the snark um, makes everybody go look at, like, kind of, I felt like on our architecture walk, um, everybody wanted to just bag on buildings, right? which is fine. It's fine. It's, they're not particularly, um, well, Fuller is more functional than architectural, but it definitely has an architectural component. Um, so when I look at your buildings in, in Unreal and it's a box on a plane, I'm like, oh yeah, Mr. Snarky, look how crappy Fuller is. Um, now suddenly it, it's your turn to make some interesting architecture and you got a box on a plane. Um, so <laughs> uh, uh, just wanna point that out that it's easier said than done to make interesting architecture at the same time some of you actually, like, I got a split-level house. Um, I got a yurt. Um, 
yeah, I know. The assignment was not to make a, a nice building. That's why I'm kind of calling you out here. I certainly didn't take take points off for uh, the box on the plane unless it didn't have a door between the inside and outside. Um, but uh, I want to, you know, say the, the architecture is more than boxes on planes. Um, so there you go. Uh, the other thing, um, like I said, it's, it's non-trivial to do the three textures, the three materials and layers uh, that you then paint with. Um, don't forget how to do it, especially uh, like the last step of uh, uh, when you're, you're, you're back, you're out of the uh, texture or you're out of the blueprint stuff and you're back in the landscape tools, you actually have to click on some buttons in there to activate those uh, materials. Um, what I find is that the three materials that each person has uh, um, has used in their tutorial, those are the three textures that I'm going to see in all your final projects. Um, so um, just be aware that uh, the point of the tutorial is, yeah, to do it once, uh, but to to get you familiar enough with it so that when it comes time for your final project, you can do what you need for the final project. Don't um, adjust your final project to, to uh, work with your tutorial. Uh, uh, use the skills made in your tutorial to uh, inform your final project. Um, anything else? Anything else? Um, the sky dome was a gimme, right? I have yet to see, uh, anybody not use the default. That's fine. Um, did you know that the sky dome has, a, um, a night mode? You don't even have to change the dome. You can just move where the the sun is in the sky and it'll change to sunset and to night um so i didn't see any night sky domes even though you just have to move the light um most people just use the default but uh occasionally somebody gets ambitious and uses um I don't know, Mars or whatever, or, or builds their own. Um, so just, just also be aware that you can build a day night cycle into any unreal project. Um, anything else, anything else? Uh, next week is sounds and, uh, I, a number of people put lakes or ponds in their landscape already. Uh, none of which were swimmable. Um, when you go swimming in your video for next week, uh, please go underwater. Um, I want to see what it looks like underwater. So what I'm looking for is when you're underwater, the physics works. Um, so that you you're actually swimming and not just walking around on the bottom of the lake uh the lighting is different uh so it looks like you're in water what that means is you have to use a post processing volume um that actually changes how light works when you're within the volume and I believe in the tutorial that I've posted, there is a post-processing volume. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure if the standard um, water 
uh, volume does the the post processing. I don't think it does. I think it's just a physics volume. So you need the the water physics volume as well as uh, the lighting post processing volume, and that that will change. Like you can set whether it's greenish water or brownish water or bluish water. Um, you know what? Honestly, I, I'm gonna turn off the wolf because um, oh, hold on. Got to shut this. Okay, it's me. Um, mostly because I'm sitting here doing this, and the wolf doesn't have articulated paws. <laughs> so um, I want to be able to use my hands. So uh, use the post processing volume. Uh, change the the way the lighting works. Um, you can even get weird lens flare in there. Uh, you can get particles um, that are floating in the water. Um, so uh, just just be aware that I, I'm looking for, and you have to be you have to have a water uh, plane on top uh, with a, a water material on it, and that plane uh uh has to like not do collision right so i have to be able to go through the plane into the various volumes um that's a reason the the other thing uh i should have had you test this week is um have uh some foliage without collision and some foliage with collision because that's a thing you need to know how to do um because if you put trees around and your player can just walk through the trees that's not uh, uh realistic right or or say you put big boulders all over the place and i could just walk through the boulders uh, that's going to break, uh, um, break the fourth wall, break, break verisimilitude. Um, but, uh, I don't want to get hung up on every blade of grass, right? I want to be able to move through, uh, grass and shrubbery at will. So those things I don't want collision on. So, uh, be aware of that going forward that, um there's some outdoor things you want collision and some things that you don't um you can and and one of the biggest uh problems i see from people is um either i can't get collision working or i can't turn collision off um sometimes you have to edit the static mesh itself and uh there are all sorts of ways uh there there's a tool for generating a collision um, volume around your static mesh. Uh, and obviously the more complicated you make that uh, collision box, the uh, more processor it will take up, especially if you use it a lot. Um, break immersion, thank you, Aiden. Um, so, uh, 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 lots of times it's like, well, I tried everything and I can't get collision turned on for this static mesh. Um, and that's when you just uh, throw in a blocking volume that is an invisible volume that players cannot move through. Um, and you just do it manually and put it where you need it. Uh, so uh, that's what I see a lot. Feel free um to ask about that sort of thing um i'm trying to think anything else i saw no um for i let me double check this um i post i also posted yes my pt video 
both in the Discord and on Canvas. Um, it's a little under, like the Ethan Carter, that was a good three hours of me playing Ethan Carter. Um, the PT video is two hours, and I actually, I get through all of PT in two hours, which is pretty good, but I had played it before, and I had actually solved it. Um, I got the baby laughs. Um, that's a whole thing. You, there are um, steps you have to take. You have to get three baby laughs, and then you can finish it. Um, and at the time, there were there was all sorts of speculation about how to get the baby laughs. I did this. I looked at this, and then I went here, and then I did not look at this, and then I got the baby laugh. Right or um, there was one thing where you had to have a mic connected to your PS4 and you had to shout the baby's name three times and then you'd get a baby laugh. And that was one way to get a baby laugh. Um, th this is, um, what's the guy's name who does Metal Gear? Kojima. Kojima, thank you. Uh, this is Kojima. Kojima is Kojima. And he, of course, uh, has said any number of things about how to get the baby laughs. Um, they are uh, either like every time you play, there there may be a pool of ways to get the baby laugh, and it it chooses things at random because uh, some people were trying things and getting consistent baby laughs, and other people we're trying those same things on their versions and it did nothing. So uh, it's all a mystery. I'm if uh, uh, it were still widely available, I'm sure it would all be solved at this point. Apparently lots of people have recreated PT in full um, with unreal uh, or with other engines and you can probably download and play uh, PT alike um, if you you watch my playthrough and um, you you decide it's your kind of thing and you want to figure it out um, feel free um, anything else there no um, how long did it take for someone to beat PT again? Um, the the first person who did it uh, basically did it by accident, and she had, um, I think she had like four or five people on her stream, um, and they were her friends as she was, you know, running around PT, and she was the first person who solved it. Um, and she has since become a famous streamer. Uh, it was something called Yogg's Cast, which I subscribed to back then. And now it is uh, a bunch of people all streaming on the one channel. And she's just one of, I think, five or six. So um, so that's, that's where Yogg's... Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure if Yogg's Cast... Uh, came from her or she joined Yogg's cast because suddenly she got noticed because she was the famous, like I watched her solve it on YouTube after uh, she had done it. So um, yeah, so she, she uh, did it um, and she's very funny. So um, if you Probably, if you search in in YouTube for first times first solve of PT, uh, you'll find it. Um, but like w when you get the reveal, when you can finally open the front door and go through, um, it was like everybody was screaming um, because the reveal was that it was Norman Reedus and uh, Guillermo del Toro and. Uh, the only thing we knew was Kojima was was involved, 
and he didn't know we didn't know what the game was or who was involved and then it said you know nor you saw norman reedus you had been playing as norman reedus all along maybe um and uh then it said guillermo del toro norman reedus uh Kojima Productions presents Silent Hills. And everybody went, oh my God, Silent Hills! A new Silent Hill! Ah. Okay. Um, why do I want you to watch PT? Also, it's it's spooky and scary. So if that bothers you, um, I don't know, play it with the lights on. Um, you can, I will scream like a little girl in the video. It is very scary. Um, I, I I think I die a couple of times. Um, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> watching with 20 stuffed animals. Um, <laughs> Courtney, you screaming scared me more than the game. <laughs> well, the funny thing was I had played it before. Um, so I knew what happened when you died but when you die it's kind of a jump scare it's it's this ghost coming out and killing you um and it's it's just as scary you know the fourth time the fifth time as the the first time yeah lisa um so okay so uh give it a watch um on wednesday at three i will be uh, streaming journey for my other class. Um, stop by if you want, uh, uh, or jump in your version of journey and play with me. Um, yeah, so I tested it this morning. Uh, I thought I was going to have to hook up my Elgato and play it on my PS3. Cause that's where I originally played it. Uh, but apparently when they released the PS4 version, uh, if you already owned it, you got the PS4 version and I found it on PS4. And so now I can stream easily. So that's exciting. Um, and then this weekend, uh, to, 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 oh, this weekend will be a semblance overture. Um, so that'll be Sunday at three. I'll be playing a semblance overture. Is it Overture? I think I got that wrong. Uh, let me check. Games, turn off software. Assemblance, Oversight. Assemblance, Oversight, not Overture. Um, so, uh, and I'm gonna admit that I have not played Assemblance, Oversight. Uh, and yet, somehow, I assigned it to you. Um, I, uh, I have played the first one and I assume, uh, that the second one is similar to the first one, um, which, uh, the whole point of PT is it's two rooms in a corridor, uh, kind of the whole point of assemblance is, um, it is small areas. Now, uh, assemblance oversight, you never know they they may have made gigantic areas but uh the scary thing about ethan carter and i wanted to touch on that so why not touch on it now um it's big don't you think i mean you guys saw you you were supposed to have played ethan carter by today right so either you played it or you watched me play it uh either way it's fine um it's a big area. Think about setting that up in unreal landscape. Cause somebody did. Right. Um, uh, do you, did you think Ethan Carter was scary? I didn't think, I, I mean, it, it's spooky, I guess. I think it was scary. Okay. I, I was scared. <laughs> Um, it's a little creepy. Um, <laughs> you chickened out after the second trap. You can't, can the traps in the first area kill you? I, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, 
No. Nick says yes. Have you? Has anyone died to the traps? They can damage you, but you have no hit points. Right. So I guess they can make the screen flash red and say, "Oops, you." But yeah, I think I think that's all it does. I think if you're too close, it like makes the screen flash, but doesn't actually do anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, Because I was like, uh, I, I. this is the second time I've played and I don't remember things from the first time I played. Um, and I th- thought I had been killed by one of the traps the first time and then like restarted in the tunnel. I don't know. Um, so that's our playtime on steam is literally three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way one thing i found uh yeah. is if you you get an achievement if you turn around and run back through the tunnel yes, yes. i that, that's the first thing i did was Same. turn around because because why wouldn't you um it stubs your toe says aiden um well it's a um i guess it's about ghosts and uh uh we're some weird investigator or ghost investigator who can uh put together scenarios is the mine area yeah i guess the mine area with the guy with the the lantern coming by and and you gotta avoid him that's straight out of every horror game ever where there's there's a monster wandering around in some kind of pattern and you have to um you have to avoid him um i i admit this time i solved the entire puzzle uh without ever being caught by him so i have no idea what i i I think it just puts you back at the start of the maze what happens when you get caught by him Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you memorize the body locations, it isn't tough. You get teleported back to the start. Um, so you can see the face of the ghost. Uh, the Shambler encounter in Call of Cthulhu. Well, that's a different game. Um, so honestly, I just ran around the maze and I didn't even get all the bodies. Um, I got what five of six or four or five or whatever it is. I, I and I brute forced the last one, and I was afraid it wouldn't let me progress. Um, if if I didn't get all the bodies, but I was very happy that it did let me brute force. Um, can you skip that thing entirely? Can you just take take the mine cart? to the end uh there's a jump scare where he teleports up to your face and then you show up back at the start uh you can see the last symbol on the note by the body at the bottom of the spiral well actually the the body at the bottom of the spiral is um oh you can but you don't get the ending until all the story puzzles are completed okay yeah, when you when you get to the final room, there's like a mural that has the locations of all the different story puzzles, and it'll have them checked off. So you can do them in any order you want, but you don't get the ending until you do all of them. Okay. Um, I'm honestly not sure if I've done all the ones. Uh, like, I'm now down at the uh, uh, the bottom of the falls, the bottom of the dam. Uh, I've gotten through the mines. I did the cemetery. I did the spaceman. I did the the house puzzle. Um, the one thing I haven't done, you know, that tower um, that's behind the house puzzle. I seem to remember there was something to do in that tower, but I just didn't go. I went there at first. Uh, there's one about a witch I didn't do. Okay. It's quite possible. The which one is near the church, I think. 
Um, to like go down the hill from where the church is. Oh, okay. Then I missed one. Um, I think there's like five or six story puzzles in total. I know I got the end last time I played. So uh, the thing is, I wanted to talk about it today, and I knew that after Sunday, I would have no time between Sunday and now um, to 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 go back and play. So uh, uh, that's as far as I got. Uh, mostly what I want to talk about with Ethan Carter is the vistas, right? Because with a huge area, um, one of the things we get is overlooks, right? And, and really, um, uh, oh, geez, I haven't, well, on Thursday, I'll do weenies. Um, uh, McKenna says, made me think I was living in Spokane, Washington. Um, yeah, it's, it's feels very, uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, the first Vista, when you leave the woods, it's interesting though. And I, I pointed out in my video, um, there's nothing to see in that first Vista Vista. If you hit the, the train bridge and you go to the left uh there's a vista and you can see the river going on but it's just it's just woods there's there's not even an interesting beach um the only thing to see there is looking back at the railroad bridge right um it's not until past the railroad bridge when you say go down to find the crank right where uh, you you actually see you can see across the lake and you can see the Carter and the uh, Van de Graaff um, houses um, and you're actually seeing places where um, you you want to go right interesting things that are in your future um, so when you're designing a vista uh, vistas are generally uh lulls in whatever the action is whether that's avoiding the little traps or putting together um the memories of what happened here right um just it's a, a moment to say wow this place looks really cool right but it's also a moment to uh say look what's coming up right look at that cool place um and honestly i i i wanted to point to um the first tower in breath of the wild uh, let me see if I can, I was Googling before and I found first tower. Um, let's see if great plateau, Shika tower. No, no, that's, that's the original. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just quickly. No. Okay. Uh, here it is. Great plateau. Uh, I was just trying to find a frame where you could see, cause basically breath of the wild is, um, all about vistas also. Okay, here, here, here. Uh, we can't see your screen. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to it. Uh, okay. So, uh, zoom, zoom, share screen, uh, share computer sound, optimize screen sharing, share. Okay. Uh, so this is, and I don't know. 
uh, uh, this is the first tower that you climb in Breath of the Wild. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Show me what I'm seeing. Okay. So one of the things um, in Breath of the Wild, you see that orange glowy thing down there? Um, that's something that you haven't been to yet. Uh, so any points of interest uh, in in the land uh, that that you haven't gone to yet will be orange. Anything that you have gone to will be uh, bright blue, right? So we've got this. You can see my cursor, right? Yes. Somebody say yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you can. So we've got this shrine, but you see over here, we also have another tower. Let's see if we can see more. Okay, oh, 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 oh. I went past it. Okay, sorry. Let's see that, go over there. Okay, uh, see up here, there's another bright orange thing. That's something else we have to get to. Uh, can I see anything else? No. Um, so um, the cool thing about uh, uh, Breath of the Wild is the, those first couple towers that you go to, um, you, you can actually see a whole bunch of orange things to go to and you're like oh i gotta go to this i gotta go to this i gotta go to this um and then as the game progresses uh they learn to hide those orange things from you uh the the orange things may still be within sight from the top of the tower but because of the placement of a hill or because of they're in the middle of trees or they're at the bottom of a hole. There are, there are things that are at the bottom of a hole. Um, you can't see the orange, right? Um, you're in sight of the guardians too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> so uh, as the, the game continues and the difficulty ramps up, you have to stop depending on just being able to see bright orange things. And you have to start looking at the landscape and say, what is interesting in what I'm seeing? What is that over there? I bet you there's something there. Let's go there. Um, and you start looking at landscape stuff um, instead of just big glowy dots, right? So it, the game teaches the player um, what where these things might be, and you start inferring, oh, hey, look, there's a tree that's taller than all the other trees around it. Let's go there. Um, oh, look, there's ruins over there. I don't see anything orange, but I've found lots of shrines in, in ruins, so let's go to those ruins. Um, and it 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 makes finding vistas part of the the mechanic of the game the the kind of core loop of of breath of the wild is really where am i going to go how am i going to get there and and then we have smaller loops of fighting or flying or climbing along the way right but the the core loop well the the core verb of breath of the wild is uh explore right it's it's an exploration game uh you can climb everywhere so it's really easy to get a nice vista pretty much anywhere yeah but there's also these towers that you have to i mean they're basically assassin's creed towers where each one is a puzzle to get to the top of and then you get this wonderful vista 
and you activate it and, and you kind of take over the land. Um, that's getting back to Ethan Carter. Um, once we get to the dam, um, we can basically, we can almost see the end of the game. We can see just about to the end of the game. Um, and every time, and, and let me, I'll, I'll do this in more detail on uh, Friday uh, when I talk about Disney World. Um, but, because uh, I'm going to talk about Disney World. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, I was in a meeting today with uh, Professor DeWinter, uh, and she she was like, oh, Dean will talk about Disney World now. I will be tuning out. <laughs> and I was like, bye. <laughs> um, so anyway, so uh, uh, they're called, the things you want to go to are called weenies. Um, artists, environmental artists call them hero buildings uh, or uh, points of interest. Um, so weenies, uh, it's even in our textbook, although I don't think we've read that part yet. Um, weenies come from, uh, making old movies, making movies. Um, and, uh, in the old Rin Tin Tin adventures, right? You got to get the dog to go where you need them to go for the shot for the story right so uh what you do is you know the the camera sees this much dog starts here you put a person over here holding a hot dog and the dog goes to the weenie thus weenie um these big buildings, these interesting buildings, um, that's why they're called weenies. And, and actually, it comes from Disney um, when uh, they were designing Disneyland. Uh, the idea was that there would be a hero building, a weenie, in each section of the park that would pull people through and orient them at all times. So uh, there's, there's a building or, well, there's a weenie in each section of the park, um, each land that's, that anchors the land that allows you to, uh, to say, you know, cause lots of times you go into a ride in one area and you come out in another area after a long tunnel in this, you know, dark ride. And you're like, where are we? What? And, and you're disoriented. So you have to look around and say, oh, there's the castle. Okay, I know where we are, right? And that, that's what weenies are. Um, we use them all the time. Um, there's a great site. Uh, no clip. Let's see, where is it? Not no clip, no clip website. Here we go. Um, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, share, share, share. Uh, share. Uh, sure, share. Uh, so this is a site called noclip.website. Um, and uh, what it has is a bunch of maps, 3D maps from 3D games. Uh, so for instance, um, if you want to look at, uh, Metroid prime, uh, we can, uh, look at the phase on mines and we'll give it a second to load. And hopefully it wasn't zoom. Wasn't real great with 3d, uh, rendered images when I tried to do this for Assassin's Creed. Can you all see that? Cause it's in the browser. Uh, let me turn chat on chat. Come on chat. Where's chat? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
It's a little dark, but I can see it. Okay, I'm going to expand my browser. Um, so the wonderful thing is this is the map. Uh, and uh, I, can, I can basically fly around there. The enemies are in T-pose, just sitting where they're, they would be. And I can fly around the map. And more importantly, I can go look at the map from above. I can get a sense of the map. All right. Uh, so, and, and honestly, I'm not that familiar with Metroid Prime. I just picked this one. Um, what I want to talk about is down here for PC, uh, Half-Life 2. Um, and I would like to do, uh, to, 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 well, let's do Canals 1. See if this will give me what I want. By the way, uh, if you're a level designer, um, this is a very, 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 very good resource because you can look around the maps without play, worrying about playing the game. Okay. So I'm going to fly up. Okay. So this is canals. Um, uh, come on. Um, here's the thing. Uh, uh, this is the path. Uh, most of this is deco. This is, you know, kind of the, the same thing as in your landscape tutorial where I said, pull up mountains to hide the edges of the world. Um, that's what these buildings are. Um, there isn't much else here. Uh, two, 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 we got a tunnel here. Not much lighting, but notice that. Uh, that's our weenie. That is the Citadel. That is the central building of the game. So let's pick another one. Actually, let's go to train station six. Should be, yeah. Um, this is when you're first escaping from the bad guys. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Can we see it? Is it around? Nope, no Citadel here. <laughs> I've already screwed up my my thesis statement. Um, we're gonna, let's go to Black Mesa East. The point being, in basically every map in Half-Life 2, um, you can see the Citadel. Okay. And now I am going to keep pulling up maps where you can't see the Citadel, of course. Um, what is this map? I, I, I'm sorry. It's been years since I played Half-Life 2. Uh, this is Black Mesa East, and I cannot see the Citadel. Uh, well, let's go to uh, uh, Ravenholm. Sometimes the you're you're in the weeds. Note that you know the buildings are tower over us, and so you're never going to be able to to see a vista long enough. Look at all these. See, I've screwed up my my thesis, um, but with with pesky facts, um, because the idea was throughout a uh, half life to uh, the Citadel is a presence. The Citadel is always there somewhere. Um, let's see. And we cannot see them in Ravenholm, but we do get 
that that feels like a weenie um places that i want to go um it's the prison we're all indoors so probably not much of anything here come on where is it okay yeah the prison is all indoors um Follow Freeman. And the, the bottom line is that whenever you see a Vista in, in uh, Half-Life 2, you see the Citadel. Yay! Okay, finally. Um, and so um, essentially your journey through the game is a kind of spiral um that gets you notice we're much closer to the citadel um than we were back at the beginning um back here at train station let's see train station five uh, uh, uh. No, this is outside of everything. Is this underground? It's hard to tell. Well, back to train station six, where we've already been. <sighs> the Citadel was here, wasn't it? Now I totally screwed up my thesis. Um, anyway, so you keep spiraling until you get to the Citadel. Nova Prospect, Follow Freeman, our benefactors, and you notice these are uh, the Citadel. We should be inside the Citadel for this, yeah. Um, so our our final level is actually inside that big building, so the whole time it's been foreshadowing that we are going to go in there and that is where the big bad lives. Um, and that's where um, we're eventually, try one under follow Freeman or canals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I picked totally uh, uh, randomly. I picked very poor maps to illustrate my point. Um, but uh, you get my point is that uh, uh, it's good design to foreshadow your climax through the, the entire story and then eventually um, pay off with, you know, look at this thing, look at this thing, look at this thing. Oh, you can't go there yet. You can't go there yet. But eventually you'll get to go there. Um, I just want to see, I was looking Sonic, Star Trek Adventures, Ocarina of Time. Somebody really loves Nintendo and is doing a lot of Nintendo maps. Because um, what I'd, I'd really like to see, um, well, Portal's good. Um, but, you know, I'd love to see the kind of uh, outdoor big place um, maps with, with like, I don't know, I'm, I'm an Assassin's Creed head, so I'd love to see uh, the cities of Assassin's Creed. I'd love to see um, uh, more uh, outside shooters, um, the Far Cry stuff, um, that sort of thing. Um, Guy who runs no clip has an hour and a half long video chatting with another guy about just the lighting in Wind Waker. Yeah, yeah. so uh, there are lots of resources for level designers. Um, I, I, I also want to get back to the idea that the name of this class is advanced storytelling. And um, 
we're three weeks in and all I've been talking about is stupid architecture and buildings. Um, we'll get there. We'll get to stories. Um, places tell stories. Um, when we get to, to Disney, which will be Friday, um, story is number one. Everything has to tell a story, whether it's a building or a rest stop or a, a restaurant or a shop. Um, everything has a story. Um, that's why you always look at when you're, you're in the stupid gift shop at whatever thing in Disney, look up because the story is usually along the top of the cabinets and the ceiling. Um, there's some great ones in there. Uh, okay. Let me just check what else I wanted to cover today. Um, vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, and honestly, the um, back to Ethan Carter, the mechanics of Ethan Carter matter less to me than walking through that environment. I think they're okay. I think it's an okay game. Um, it's not, uh, it's not the best to, to, especially like the first time you're that, that first train puzzle, um, you don't know how to play the game and it doesn't do a particularly good job with teaching you how to play the game. Um, you're just kind of looking around and things pop up and what am I supposed to do? Okay. I, I, I got that. I need a crank. So I got the crank and then now I can move the train. And the first time I played it, man, I moved that train back and forth like 10 times. Cause what are you supposed to do with the train? I don't know. Uh, let's go to the bridge. No, that's not right. Let's go all the way back to where else I can put it. No, that's not right. What, what, what am I supposed to do with this stupid train? Oh, I'm supposed to put it where it was when these idiots were talking that, mm, I mean, they, they try, but it's not particularly well conveyed. Um, and then the, I like, once you get it, once you say, Oh, when I put the train there and I find the rock and I put the rock in the right place, I am, uh, recreating, the tableau all right and these are the three big concepts of this class um and and probably the best tools of the level designer is the vista the weenie and the tableau uh and they're all in ethan carter uh the tableau is a bunch of stuff what we would call deco or, or set decoration um, that tells a story, right? So um, if, if uh, uh, Ethan Carter, it doesn't quite make sense because usually um, what we want is, um, oh, there are severed legs on the train tracks. The train must have run over a dude. Let's follow the blood trail. Oh, look, a dude with no legs who is dead. But so I guess the train ran over the dude. Who was driving the train? Probably another dude. Uh, why would, why? Did he kill the guy with, oh, he's got a, he's been hit in the head with a rock. That's why he didn't get out of the way of this incredibly slow train. Did you notice the train doesn't really go that fast and anybody who, who has their wits about them could probably outrun the train because you can't get a train off the tracks. It's not like you can run the guy down. Um, Owen says that's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, the, it, it, that little murder reminds me of, uh, the, um, 
what's the Mike Myers? Mike Myers? Uh, 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 ah, my brain is having farts today. Um, the the uh, international man of mystery. Um, the spy guy, the funny spy guy. Come on, somebody. Help my brain. Austin Powers, thank you. You know when Austin Powers is is killing the guy with the um the really slow spinny thing that I don't have words for? The the Zamboni. The steamroller. The the ice the ice thing. Yeah. Um it is the Zamboni is Deadpool. Deadpool does the same. Deadpool thing. is the st- okay. Deadpool rap. Austin Powers kills a guy with a steamroller and the steamroller is going maybe half a mile an hour and the guy is just kind of like no and 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 crawling away and it's just a slow motion um steamrolling of a dude uh and that's what this this first uh murder reminds me of because anybody with their wits about them should have been able to get out of the way um so uh, once we construct the tableau again it doesn't make sense to me because a tableau is what ha- reconstructing what happened based on where everything is and what you have to do is find all the stuff and put it back in the place it was before the thing happened right um uh 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 uh, uh. Let me pull up. I think I have an actual PowerPoint. I know. Crazy to have an actual PowerPoint. I have too many things open. Uh, Advanced storytelling. Um, It should be what happened here. Yes. Okay. Uh, no. Do I have a PowerPoint? Okay. Creating. No. no. I thought I had a PowerPoint. Uh, let's see in documents. Uh, Man, I wish I was organized. This is all being recorded. Everybody can watch me not be organized. Uh, P- M- no. Okay. Well, so um, a good uh, talk. Uh, if it's storytelling, here we are. Um, this was a talk given by Matthias Warch and Harvey Smith at GDC 2010. Um, And I want to show you, let's see, that's game environment. Uh, I'm just gonna pick out a little bit. Uh, They use Bioshock all the time. because that was what was hot at the time. Um, But, and this is one of the talks that introduced the idea of environmental storytelling. Okay. Um, Let me share this screen. Share, share, share. Share screen. There it is. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger. This is a photograph. Um, these are two goldfish, uh, stuck to a screen, uh, six feet off the ground. Oh, I stopped the share, share screen. Sorry. Uh, share. I was trying to get chat going. Um, so this is a photograph. This is not a drawing. This is not a 3D render. Um, 
this is a photograph. Um, that is a window. Those are curtains on the left side. Um, and uh, here we are. Um, there are two dead goldfish stuck to that window screen uh, six feet off the ground. That's environmental storytelling. Be well, that's a tableau because the question is, what happened here? How do those two goldfish get stuck and die on that screen six feet off the ground? Uh, so, um, any ideas? Here, I, I'm saying think, like a hurricane or a tornado or something picked them up, slammed them into the window. Okay, uh, that's a good guess. Anybody else? Really sticky flood. A really sticky flood. Um, someone was really <laughs> mad at their goldfish. Uh, okay, um, so if we back out a little bit, um, doesn't really give us much information. Uh, hey, you can read it as well as I can. Uh, we'll back out a little bit more. And wow. Okay, you were right. It's a hurricane or a flood. Um, essentially, the goldfish were in their tank in this living room. Um, and the flood water rose to uh, here, right? Um, and uh, the water wants to get out of the open window, so the goldfish are pushed up against the um, the window. And it was Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. These are all pictures from Hurricane Katrina. Um, and we can go out further and we can see that it's one of the few uh, the few houses still standing in the area and it's it's Hurricane Katrina after the flood um, so uh, with one little detail like that you can put a kind of uh, personal face on a big event, right? Um, one of the things you'll see, one of my favorite games was Fallout 3. Um, and one of the things about Fallout 3 is that uh, you, it's, it's big. There's a lot of room in Fallout 3 right uh I, I fallout 4 is bigger but i haven't played fallout 4 um so uh one of the things they kind of just said to their level designers their their environment designers is make stuff make interesting stuff um and one of the things that happened is that there's a limited supply of assets. There's only so much stuff in the database, right? So um, the, the level designers started getting weird, right? And uh, you'd open up a door and you'd be in a broom closet full of teddy bears staring at you. Right. Or they'd make up little scenes of uh, like lawn gnomes having a cock, uh, a, a tea party. Um, man, I wish I could find a PDF introduction. No tool set. Nope. Nope. I have a PowerPoint somewhere for this, which I have to find by Friday. Um, 
because I have the screenshots, the cool screenshots from Fallout. Tabletop. Oop. It's got to be in documents somewhere. Um, oh, you know what? It's probably on my laptop because I usually teach this course with my laptop. Uh, let's see. And then, oh, panic papers. Is it under WPI stuff? Uh, nope, that's really old. Well, okay, so I, I got to find my PowerPoint slides. Here's another one, quest and level design. Nope, really old syllabi. Uh, okay, so um, so I, I, I've got a bunch of stuff about tableaus. Um, it's about telling the story. Um, did I just close that? Yes, I did. Um, the one other thing, um, one of the best things in uh, uh, Bioshock Infinite, um, the way, so they have a problem in Bioshock Infinite in that they have to tell the story of, uh, is it, by, no, it's, is it Bioshock? Infinite or Bioshock? Basically, um, what they make is a dark ride um, in the game that is no longer functioning um, and tells the story of Andrew Ryan. So it is, it's Bioshock. Um, and you, you, it's, it's no longer working because, you know, Rapture is a mess. Um, so uh, you get to walk through this wrecked dark ride um, that is full of graffiti and horror. Um, and it not only, it's got your, um, your old, what it was built for, which is to tell the story of Andrew Ryan, um, but it also uh, tells the story of what happened here um, because um, there's graffiti all over it. There's somebody, somebody wrecked the place. Uh, let me see if it's in this talk. So oh, those are in affordances. No, no. That. So in, in Bioshock, we get the New Year's Eve party um which tells us what happened here um the detritus of uh the last new year's eve party before everything went to hell in rapture um i swear it's in bioshock infinite uh that's telegraphing do, 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 do. nope nope Oh. Okay. Um, this is um, this is another technique uh, here. Oh, I think there's something similar in Infinite. Yeah, I think the the um, the dark ride is in Infinite and not uh, Bioshock. Let me show you this one because this this is this gets made fun of all the time. Um, this is from Left 4 Dead 2, right? And um, environmental, like now whenever we see graffiti, um, somebody takes a picture of it, puts it on Twitter and calls it environmental storytelling. Uh, so here is the, the genesis of that meme, um, which is the walls and the safe houses in Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2, um, we have what it was originally, which is 
uh, this this half ripped off poster, um, which is, hey, if you think you are infected, do these things, right? Somebody got mad at this enough to try and rip it off the wall because obviously those things are not working. Um, let me make it bigger. Uh, so remain calm. That's laughable. Do not attempt to contact family or friends, uh, friends or family or pets. Somebody's goofing around. Uh, contact command and, and nothing else there. And then we've got, um, I can't make that out. Let's see if I can get bigger. Why she, I don't, I don't know what that says. Why is she laughing? Um, who's she laughing? Um, if anybody can read it better than I can. Uh, 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 chat, chat, chat. I don't know. Alt H. Uh, I can't seem to get chat to come up. Um, so, okay. So, uh, not only that, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can see it. Um, we've got graffiti. Um, and everybody thinks, and everybody makes fun of graffiti as a, a, a medium to tell the story of what happened here. So uh, somebody writes, at least it takes at least four days to change. Uh, somebody crosses that out. No, it doesn't. Three days. Somebody crosses that out. Two and a half hours. Uh, I saw it happen in five minutes. Um, move during the day. Uh, this one cut and I don't know what that, that's vampires moron. Oh, Move during the day, they only come out at night. That's vampires, moron. No zombie is safe from Chicago Ted. And Chicago Ted is a running uh, character in the graffiti, apparently. Um, but that's really the extent of telling the story of uh, what happened in the zombie apocalypse, because Left for Dead isn't really concerned um, with telling a story uh, so much. I mean, it does tell a story, but uh, it's not telling the story of the zombie apocalypse. It's telling the story of four survivors who have to make it to the next thing, right? Uh, so present action is much more important than what happened here in Left for Dead. So, and the only time we really have to like rest and look at things is in the safe houses. Uh, otherwise we should keep moving, we should keep going. Uh, let's move, move, move. Uh, okay. So I'll talk more about tableaus. Uh, I'll talk more about environmental storytelling. Um, these are all techniques we as level designers use to tell stories. The other technique uh, is with sound. Um, and that kind of breaks the, um, the, the ver verisimilitude of the simulation because, uh, well, number one, nobody records 30 seconds of monologue on a digital recorder and tosses it and then gets another digital recorder records 30 seconds of of thoughts and tosses it um but that's what we've become accustomed to um and it, we can trace that back to star trek i blame star trek uh captain's log star date 4206.5 um, we have just entered orbit around Alpha Gamma, Theta, Tau, whatever. Um, Mr. Spock is acting weird. And then we go into the story. Uh, when we got to uh, System Shock, 
and I, I honestly think this is the first time we saw it, um, we would find, uh, and System Shock is about uh, a, an AI on a spaceship that goes rogue and uh, kills everybody, um, maybe, or maybe there's something else going on. Um, but it's a spaceship, a big spaceship full of people, right? And, and they're all dead now. So how do we find out about them? Well, they're all naval officers and in the Navy now, it's not just the captain that has to keep a log. It's everybody in the Navy has to. So first officer's log, 2206. Um, I, or or uh, ship's doctor's log, right? And so one of the ways we find out what happened here in, in the original System Shock and eventually System Shock 2 is these these logs right because in on spaceships that's what people do um and then we get to bioshock made by the same guy as system shock 2 um and we're not on a spaceship anymore um but he's so used to telling the story that way uh, that he just says, well, it's a convention of the genre. Get over it. And in in my underwater city, everybody keeps a little log on these cool little recorders. Everybody talks to themselves and then throws them away. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah. I, it's Ken Levine. Um, I know it's a contrivance, but it's the way I can tell the story in multiple voices at multiple times. Uh, and I can control what you hear of the story based on where you are. And you can ignore it if you want. You can not bother to pick those things up if you want. Um, or you can obsessively collect them if you want. Up to you. Isn't the captain's log thing just an audio version of journal entries that you find in certain games? Um, yeah. Um, Star Trek was first. I mean, old Trek had captain's log and that goes back to actual sailing ships where the captain wrote an actual log, right? Um, so uh the idea of star trek naval captains keeping a an audio log yeah they are um uh the old star trek are classics i i read your chat aloud because on the recording we don't record the chat um so i actually have i if i just respond to them people watching this recording later will be like what's he talking about um so okay so um the, it it comes back to journals right um the the old navy uh uh required uh, and basically all uh merchant marine and everybody kept a ship's log and for the most part it was a position of the ship right this is where we are. Uh, this is the speed we're going. Uh, this is the direction we're heading. Um, when something notable happened, uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Smith died today, you, you enter it in the log, right? Um, and now it becomes this contrivance for underwater cities and flying cities. Uh, the other way to do it is just don't make a, an actual physical anything, right? And and that's the way Ethan Carter does it. Is you 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 get to a place and voiceover starts, right? Um, whether that's the internal monologue of the detective that you're playing, or um, <clears throat> 
the ghosts who were in this area beforehand. Right. Um, and we don't have to explain it. The same happened in Gone Home. Dark Souls has great environmental storytelling using the items you pick up. Yes. Um, you actually have to read the descriptions of the items. It's all still text, right? Um, so when I pick up a journal and I have to read, it's text. When I listen to somebody read their log, it's essentially an audio book, right? Um, yes, the audio version, the audio recordings are just audio versions of that book. Um, so I want to differentiate between this kind of audio storytelling. Yes, exactly. Still text, John. Um, I want to I want to differentiate between the audio storytelling and the environmental storytelling. So, for for instance, um, uh, the let's see. What else does he have? Chains of events. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, puzzle, 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 puzzle. Uh, see, the wonderful thing about going to all sorts. Oh, here it is. Um, I knew it was in here somewhere. Uh, is this? I got to share the screen. Uh, it's in Bioshock 2. That's it. Uh, to, to, to zoom. Uh, 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 share screen, share screen, sure. Uh, okay, so uh, here's in Bioshock 2, see the, the redheaded stepchild of the Bioshock series that originally everybody was like, oh, it's crap, but in retrospect, it holds up better than the other two. Um, uh, this is in this kind of dark ride. This is the um, replica of Andrew Ryan's desk, I think. Uh, and in paint, which is splattered about, um, we see, uh, what is it? Zam will, Lamb will lead the way. The end of Ryan is the end of the self. Reject the tyranny of the set something we can't tell rapture failed we did not and he points out that they left the paintbrush here there's a paintbrush sitting here um so they said what they had to say they dropped their paintbrush they went off to kill people um this is still text right um who are they, I mean, who are they trying to convince? It's tyranny of the self. I mean, it's, I guess in the, the Left 4 Dead 2 um, safe houses, they're leaving messages for future uh, refugees, future uh, denizens of the safe house. Um, the graffiti uh, in in rapture everything goes to hell everybody's fighting everyone um because they're they're all being driven um nuts by this atom they're given superpowers plus they're addicted to the atom right so they have to um tyranny of the self is that what it is reject the tyranny of the self okay yeah um, so, uh, this is the become one with everybody else kind of thing, um, which is, uh, part of the whole Adam thing is, is you're in contact with everybody else. Um, so, uh, are they trying to convince other people in rapture? Are they like, so... So when you, if you leave these um, these messages in your levels, one of the things you got to ask is, who'd, who'd they write this for? 
like why'd they put this here um because if it's to tell the player the story uh you 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 done screwed up um you've got to give your your sign painter real motivations um i want to look because i don't have much time i wanted to to play some of your presentations um but Let's see if I can pull up some fun things. Uh, okay, so there is an account on Twitter called Environmental Storytelling. And all they do is post funny pictures. Uh, environmental story storytelling. What's the story there? Uh, we can turn on chat, chat. Chairs. That's a lot of chairs. That's three stories of chairs. Right? What? Why? why? Um, so the apparently it's installation art. Uh, let's go back to environmental storytelling. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, I don't know that that's environmental storytelling. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, environmental storytelling. That's a good one. Uh, nature is healing. <laughs> ah, you never know when someone needs to take a seat. Uh, uh, environmental storytelling. Fun, fun, fun. Um, ooh, what's this one? Ah, that's the same road at different times. Same. Is it? That's 70s and today? Uh, although there's no indication that it is because it could be a different road. I don't know. The right one is from the past? I don't think so. I don't think the signs match up because there's no 42 and 42. And it's 61, 61. It's just two different pictures. I think I call shenanigans on this one. Some of the no, signs, the signs there's, there's some signs that got removed on the right one or weren't there, were installed yet. Do you think? Because like yeah. the stop sign and the 60, those like the 61, 41 are both there on the other side of the intersection. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, but the, the one on the left is, is older than the one on the right. They have widened. No, they haven't widened the road. The road is the same width. Uh, there are just no more cars parked and it looks like all the residential buildings have been torn down along with this church building isn't there anymore. Um, basically this is a town that's been wiped out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, what do we got here? Subway? I'm not sure if there's any storytelling there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like know. locations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? That's not environmental storytelling. That's someone having fun with peanuts. Uh, environmental storytelling. No, it's not. Oh, come on. Yeah, I can't trust Twitter. Here's a good one. <laughs> We're open and here for you. 
but you can't get anywhere from where it says we're open and hear from you. They are trapped in this one lane. See? Um, oh, I like that one. Environmental storytelling, a tale of two kitties. They love each other. They can never see each other. They do look alike. Maybe they're brother and sister. Maybe they're sisters. Oh, there's environmental storytelling. Uh, I would bet that's a food bank line. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm skipping some. Let's go to real environmental storytelling. Well, the granaries or the mine. I don't know if that's a granary or a mine. I think, um, I guess it's a mine, uh, is gone, is out of work. Nature is reclaiming it, and the graffiti artists are reclaiming it. Yeah, not a good one. Really? <laughs> yeah, not, not environmental storytelling. So um, one of the things I saw um, uh, on Twitter, um, especially in the first days of uh, COVID was uh, um, various graffiti around where, you know, somebody wrote on a street plague here uh, or somebody else wrote, uh, uh, this is all Trump's doing or um, a series of graffiti uh, uh, calls and replies with Black Lives Matter stuff. Um, and each one, uh, they're posted by game designers or, or developers and, and they, the person who posted apologized for making fun of level designers for their two on the nose environmental storytelling um, because the real world is much, much more on the nose than, than any video game. Uh, people try to be subtle with their environmental storytelling and real graffiti artists just come out and say what they're going to say, right? Um, uh, the famous, oh, let's see if I can find it. Um, uh, uh, let's see, let's see. There's an old guy. Nope. Here. No, no, no. Okay, so uh, the the joke was uh, as long as okay. So let's share this. I'll just do one more and then call it a day. Share, share that, share. Um, so uh, this is a car, uh, state owned that, oh, all of these, um, this whole parking lot full of these, these cars uh, got, got graffitied. Um, and then they find out that it's it's white people who did it. Um, it's the old hello young people. Um, I am I am trying to uh, forward 
uh, my agenda by uh, implicating the people I am against. Uh, how do you do, fellow kids? Yes, exactly. Um, that uh, uh, are blatantly, you can see through them in a minute because uh, uh, the actual protesters, when they uh, put graffiti somewhere, they don't write black power. They write BLM. They write, remember Breonna Taylor. <laughs> they, and this is what, uh, uh, um, segregationists, um, white supremacists think the other side would write. So, uh, it becomes a little weird. Uh, okay. So, or what 2020 was, an, uh, what is it? Or like how 2020 proved a lot of horror tropes much more realistic than we all thought. Uh, or was 2020 influenced by horror tropes? Um, so my original plan today was to, to talk an hour and then uh, show some presentations from you guys. Um, and I got to an hour and a half. Uh, and I was like, well, that that's going to suck. So I kept going. Um, and I kind of, I feel like I ran out of steam this last 10 minutes, but, and, and I end up sharing Twitter tropes. Uh, so uh, I'll do better on Friday. Uh, maybe I'll show some of the presentations. Uh, it's always a little dangerous for me to show presentations before I've seen them. Um, I'd rather show good ones than bad ones. Uh, but that, uh, but also normally I would just ask y'all, to get up and do your presentations and I wouldn't have talked today, but then we wouldn't have talked about uh, Vistas, Weenies and uh, Tableaus. Uh, we'll talk more about Tableaus. Look for the Tableaus in PT. There are no Vistas in PT. Is there, are there Weenies in PT? I ask you, because uh, usually Vistas and Weenies go together. Is there a, a, a weenie in no weenies, <laughs> only screenies? Um, I think there are weenies. Okay. Well, I, I, I suppose we'll talk about it on, on Friday. Um, look for weenies. Um, there are definitely tableaus. Um, there is definitely environmental storytelling. Um, just the cleanliness of the bathroom is environmental storytelling. Uh, so uh, look for that. Whatever is hanging from the ceiling is environmental storytelling. Yes. Uh, uh, I will finish grading. And um, if you haven't watched the architecture walk, um, watch it. Uh, quiz is up four questions. They do involve PT and Ethan Carter. So be aware of that um, if you haven't played them. And uh, uh, just a, a, a reminder that the tutorials um, generally get harder, just like everything in every class, right? So maybe don't leave it till Saturday night to start. Just saying, you know, because the videos take a while just to watch, right? So maybe maybe give it a gander before Saturday. Um, and uh, come watch me play Journey on Wednesday. Okay. Have a good day. Stopping recording.